Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Michael's class on uh, fall leave studies. I'm your instructor, Adrian Hodge, and this is part one of a two part class in which we will be creating this. I'm going to leave it there because it, it's got a little layout on, on the table, but we're going to be creating this we'll fall leave studies using watercolor next week, but tonight we're going to be drawing it in graphite so that we can prepare, um, you know, to, to draw these leaves nice and loose. Um, so a couple of reasons why we're, we're sketching it first. Uh, one is so because the nature of these Zoom classes I have learned is that if I want you to draw nice and light uh, in order to be able to cover up your pencil sketch with uh, some watercolors easily, it's difficult on Zoom for me to draw nice and light because um, my lines will not appear on the Zoom screen. So we're gonna draw nice and dark tonight in our sketchbooks and get this uh, lovely study going in graphite and give, so for, for that reason, and then we'll be able to sketch it more easily on the, uh, on the, um, so I'm getting distracted by some of the, the stuff on the, in the chat. I'm gonna switch to my tabletop view in just a moment and show you uh, some of, and show you the visual. I just don't wanna mess up my, my tabletop layout that I, I have set up at the moment. Uh, anyway, uh, so the other reason that we are doing the study is just so we can familiarize ourselves with leaves. This class will also be a very good supplement to anybody who uh, has attended the uh, flower fundamental classes that we've had several of uh, in the, the past year and a half or so, uh, because in all of those classes, we've really focused on the um, the flower petals and the flower shapes and forms themselves and not so much on the, the leaf shapes. So. Um, if you want to check out any of those classes later on YouTube, you can just search Flower Fundamentals, and I, I believe Chanel has a couple of those uh, videos that she can drop in the, the chat for you if you want to check those out later. And then I'll go ahead and switch to my tabletop view so we can go over supplies and talk about the visuals. I also have the leaf in question, so even though we're drawing multiple leaves, I basically just photographed this same leaf that I found a couple months back with all our wonky Texas weather we've had the last year, the leaves were very confused even two months ago in uh, September. So, cause it's already November now. So yeah, I guess I picked that up. September was when I was planning these classes. Anyway, so here is the, the sketch that we'll be working on tonight. And then next week we'll be translating that into a lighter sketch with pencil that we can then cover up with our watercolors. And you can use any watercolors, but I will be using some very specific, um, these watercolors, these Viviva color sheets that uh, come on little sheets. They're very cool and you just get them wet and they activate and they come in all these lovely colors and there's some, we're not even mixing any colors to get these fall colors. These are just the, um, a lot of the reds and ochres and, and green, greens that we have here in the Viviva color sheet. So pretty straightforward palette that we'll be creating for this one next week. And then we'll also be using a little bit of white, uh, Windsor Newton white ink, we'll be splashing that in there. We'll be using a white gel pen uh, and I think that's it. And we'll be using some Strathmore watercolor paper to get that job done. And here now I'll go ahead and switch to my forward facing just so I can hold that up and you can get the full effect of that that we'll be creating next week. Okay, so, but tonight we're gonna be working on just our sketch and our study for these watercolor fall leaves that we'll be doing next week. And honestly, I like to think of everything that I do as a study because it really takes the pressure off of feeling like you need some, um, you know, frame worthy project out of everything that you do. You know, I don't like to put that kind of pressure on myself. Okay, so I'm using a Canson uh, sketch pad here, and then I've got some Faber-Castell pencils, this very well-loved, little tin of six pencils here. I've got a synthetic eraser that I got at Michael's. 
And all of these supplies were purchased at Michael's or online on the uh, Michael's website. And then here are some of my business cards using some of my art that I do using calligraphy ink. So if you want to check out more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge Art. I'm also on Facebook, Adrian Hodge Fine Art. And don't forget to tag your work that you make from tonight's class or any class with those hashtags, make it with Michael's or Michael's classes. Okay, I'm gonna set all that aside and then grab a, a blank piece of paper so that we can get started on these uh, fall leaves. Oh, and, and actually, don't let me forget one other thing that would have been on the supply list for you to easily access were these these photographs of of that leaf that I have on my desk here. So I tried to really capture some movement with some of these. And then I've got some resting ones. So for that one or two, it depends on how you want to do it in the sketch. I put two of them on the, uh, you know, kind of like they're sitting on the surface of something so that they're casting a shadow. But then the other ones, uh, I used these these images that are more in motion. Let me just get the rest of them on the screen here. I didn't actually save all of them. I have to always remember to send these photos to my iPad on time and I did not do that when I needed to. So give me just a moment here. I don't have to go into my messages on the iPad to access them. I want to get these motion leaf the action shots here so I can easily reference them. Okay, so we had this one that is resting on this, the surface there, and this one is also resting. But then we've got these that are a little blurry, but we can still see kind of the, the movement and the form of the leaf as it's, it's falling down. So I spent and then I've got this one as well, because I wanted to get it like at some different angles and we can ignore the shadow on that, but that kind of gives it the sense of feeling like it's falling and folding over itself and going in some different directions there. So you can use all of these reference photos and create your own composition of falling leaves. You could, you know, set up, if you want to take my idea and set up a little still life like I did with some different leaves. I just used some brown paper and a lamp and my iPhone. And I definitely spent way too much time trying to capture the perfect falling leaf photo and then realized that uh, now it's kind of hard to do. It was kind of hard to get it in motion there. I tried slow motion videos. I tried, and then I just ended up taking uh, screenshots of the, uh, the just photo of the, the leaf falling anyway and then I think I ended up putting like a rock or an eraser inside of the the inner curl of the leaf to get it to stand up like that at some different angles so if you're just curious about how I you know took these reference photos that's what I did because I always want to make sure that I'm you know equipping you with the uh, resources to be able to you know do your own do your own thing and you know be inspired to make something new okay let me just find a blank page in this sketchbook because i just realized my brand new sketchbook is also in my car i'm doing a lot of in-person teaching these days and my supplies just keep wandering away all right i'm gonna go with this not so super blank page here. Okay, so let's get started drawing these leaves. We're gonna start with, let me tear out other sketch so I have it handy here. This was the other way I had thought about doing this. And my 10 year old told me that leaf didn't look like it was falling. It <laughs> just looked like three different sized leaves. So sometimes these concepts take a while to 
to figure out. Okay. So I did want to start with kind of making one of the leaves a little bit smaller up here, and then we are going to increase them in size. So I still kept that concept, but then I kind of changed the directional, um, you know, flow of the leaf to make it feel like it was falling and more in action. Gotta love having those uh, critics in the house to keep you honest, uh, like my daughter telling me it didn't look like a falling leaf uh, the other way. Um, and then we are gonna add those blurry leaves are gonna really help us to get these kind of leaves in the background that that feel like they're also falling and a little farther away. And those you know show up in our watercolor in the background there, and they're gonna be kind of blurry. Okay, so let's start with, let's see which reference image we're gonna start with for this smaller one up here in the top corner. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I just saw such a nice compliment there from Michelle. Okay. Um, well, geez, which one of these was it that I was looking at for that one? I'm starting to think. I didn't screenshot that one for some reason. We're gonna change it just slightly. Oh, it was this one, okay. It looked a little different. So we're gonna do this one, yeah. So it feels like it's kind of just falling off of the tree and we're looking at the back side of it and we're gonna make it a little smaller. So this is the one we're looking at for the kind of top right margin of our sketch here. And I'll just show you the other one again. So we're looking at this particular reference photo and we're going to be sketching this leaf a little bit smaller than some of the other leaves and it's going to go in the top right hand uh, part of our sketchbook um, page and I am going to be using a 6B pencil so that my lines are showing up nice and dark. I might actually switch between a, a 2B and a, a 6B. And, but I want you to use whatever pencil you feel the most comfortable with um, sketching with. That might be a B pencil or it might be an H pencil. So you can keep your lines nice and light and easier to erase. It is always up to you, but that is probably the number one question I get asked the most in these classes is, which pencil am I using? Um, you definitely do not need to use the same pencil as me. I'm using a darker pencil at all times so that my lines will show up on the Zoom. Okay, so we're gonna start with just the overall leaf shape here. And it might be kind of hard for me to get this image and my sketch on the, the screen at the same time. Um, let me move my camera just a little bit, but you do have the reference photos available to you, so it should be okay if I do like that, so I can try to get it in there. It's kind of hard to get the whole thing in there, but I know sometimes people want to see it on the screen at the same time. Uh, so I'm starting with the stem. And if you can't see my lines yet, hang on just a second and I will darken them up. And I'm just looking for, I'm drawing a little bigger than I meant to, because again, I want you to see it on the Zoom, but I want you to get it a little smaller on the page. So think about these, the leaves are kind of increasing in size as they go down the page. And we're kind of creating foreground, middle ground, and background here with that. And we're given the sense that the leaves that are uh, at the top of the page are in the sky and they're kind of far away. So they're a little smaller and then they're gonna get bigger and bigger as they drop to the ground. Okay, so that was just my 2B pencil and just to kind of find that shape there. And then now I'm gonna to start to get more of uh, these little fang things that are sticking off of the leaf. That's what I'm calling them, fangs, those little pointy shapes. And I'm just kind of clarifying some of these little edges and curves that are happening here. 
One class that you can definitely refer back to if you are struggling right away with making your leaf feel rounded and three-dimensional is a class that we just completed a few weeks ago that was reviewing um, a basic concept of contour lines. And we were using a photograph of a lime to sketch uh, the contour lines of this lime and to make it look less flat and more three-dimensional. So right now I've got a pretty flat, empty shape here. And in order to make it feel more three-dimensional, you wanna think about these kind of elevational dips and curves. And, you know, we can put some of like the, the stem and some of these lines and veins that show up in there. And as long as we get those to feel like they're kind of curving around the form, they're gonna feel nice and three-dimensional. Also, as we get some of the shapes of shadows and light in there, it's also gonna feel more three-dimensional, but notice how as I'm putting on these little veins, they're kind of curving in a way that follows the contour lines. And if that doesn't make sense, what I mean by contour lines, you can check out that other class after this one, and that will really help you understand three-dimensional forms and uh, contour lines or these sort of elevational lines that wrap around all of the edges of a form. So think about like your hand would be the form and the outer lines, like the silhouetted outline of the hand, that's just one edge, but every curve and every edge and fold of your hand, um, you know, all the way around on all of the surfaces, that is those are the, the contour lines. So we want to account for all of these edges. So I'm just kind of curving around and I'm going to do this for all of these, these leaves. And as we add value to them, sorry, my light keeps kind of making my sketch disappear here. I'm going to make sure I cover up my light just a little bit so you all can see my drawing a little better. I'm looking for these little shapes of shadows and shapes of light. So I'll just point some of those out to you right here. I see these kind of triangle shapes on the edge of these, these veins or stems within the leaf. And then these shapes of light. So all of those value shapes are curving around the contours of the form. So this little triangle, it's not just a flat triangle, it's curving around the form. And this little triangle value shape, it does the same thing. So just having that slight curve as it wraps around the contours of the form is gonna make it feel like it's more curved and three-dimensional. So that's what we're looking for. And we're doing that on all of the edges not just on one side, we're looking for all of those value curves. And this is important because the next week when we add our watercolor to this, um, you know, we're also gonna try to make our brush strokes follow these same contours um, in order to uh, make our, you know, our watercolor feel three-dimensional on these leaves and just make it feel more realistic and less uh, flat. So um, yeah, sorry, sometimes it's always the graphite, always these sketching classes. Every time it comes around that I'm not using a darker um, material, the struggle to get the lines, like it looks fine in front of me. My table surface is so well lit, but something about graphite on Zoom it just does not want to show up. And the way that I move my hand blocks the light and affects the way it's showing up on screen. So I just turned my light off and I think that it is helping improve it just a little bit more. And I'm just gonna leave my iPad kind of off to the side here so that the shifting light of it at least tries to, to stay in one place. But yeah, it's just, it's just the nature of Zoom and and movement and light and graphite. It's not always an ideal situation. Uh, but yeah, just 
if you just, you know, give me some patience, the more lines I put on there, the darker it will be and the easier it will be to, to see my drawing as we go along. You just got to bear with me when I have minimal lines on here. Okay, so let's start to add some value to this. Um, value is the, the dark and light of, of any form, right? So, and we've talked about that multiple times, uh, that, that same class on contour lines talks about it as well. Um, we've got some classes coming up where I'm gonna be reviewing some of these basic concepts as well in December. So look out for those. Um, I'm using the side of my 6B pencil and I'm just doing this soft little continuous tonal shading blend. And I'm trying to follow the contours as I'm doing that. So I'm letting my value, let me add this little vein over here too. I'm letting my value wrap around that slight curve at the edge of the leaf. And just that subtle little, you know, curve to the value is going to also make it feel more three-dimensional. And same thing here. So I'm just looking around at the leaf for where I see these, these darker shadow shapes. And then I'm letting up on my pressure as to kind of blend out that value as well. And we're not looking for perfection here. We're really just looking for, like I said, to understand the uh, shape and form of the leaf, what the value is doing, what the light is doing. As we're doing this, we're, we're studying it and it's going to seep into our brain and our eyes and our understanding so that when we go to render these leaves using the watercolor, we're gonna do some really quick splashy motions with these colors, but we want to hopefully capture the three dimension of these leaves as we're doing that. So the more we sketch and study a form, the better our understanding is gonna be of that form and the easier it's gonna be to paint it like that in watercolor. Okay, so let me move it along here because I feel like we're already getting deep into the class and I'm still on this first leaf here. But it's always a little slow getting started on things. And then we're just going to be drawing the same thing over and over again. So it should be faster and easier each time we do it. Okay, so we're ignoring the background shadow on this one because this is our leaf that's floating in air. There are a couple things that I'm doing here that I'm just sort of doing without uh, thinking too, uh, too much about. And that is I'm shifting my uh, pressure on my pencil around the outer edge of the leaf. And notice I didn't like press down really hard on the uh, outer edge of the leaf in all of the places. I'm only doing that in some very select places like over here, I'm gonna do it. And I'll add just a little more value in the places where I'm having a heavier line. So we've got a class, I said we're going to be reviewing a lot of basic concepts in December. I'm really looking forward to these classes that are coming up in December because we're going to be reviewing the uh, graphite pencils, the basics of the, uh, like a beginner's guide to the, the graphite pencils. We're going to do a class on, uh, and, and then yeah, we're going to be, have a class on line weight. And we're going to be using blind contours to explore line weight. And that's basically just that variation in the amount of pressure that I'm putting on the line. And so, yeah, check out that class that's coming up if you're interested in exploring what I mean by line weight. I'm excited about that. But basically, it's just, uh, like I said, varying our amount of pressure that we put on our pencil in some places, but we've got some fun exercises in those upcoming classes to explore that. All right, let's switch to a different uh, leaf reference here so that we can get this mid-air leaf falling. Let me see which one we want to use for that. So it's this one is the one that I used for the the center uh, leaf in our 
our study here. You can kind of see the side by side and identify that that's the, the leaf that I was looking at. And again, we're ignoring the shadow so that it doesn't feel like it's, uh, you know, resting on the ground. It's going to feel more like it's falling in midair. And I definitely drew that last leaf much bigger than I meant to. So I'm just going to compensate a little bit here and draw this one like about the same size, but hopefully you drew yours a little smaller. It's always so tricky trying to do what I want to do on these Zoom classes and, you know, stick to to my plan sometimes because I want you to be able to see my drawing. So especially that first one. So I went a little bigger than I meant to, but I'm gonna make this one at least slightly bigger than that last one. And hopefully you made that one a little smaller. You can always draw it again if you're, you know, if you have a 10 year old nearby who tells you that leaf doesn't look like it's falling when you're done. Uh, we've got a few different devices here that I think are helping it feel like falling leaves, but the increasing size is definitely one of them. Okay, so we got that kind of outer uh, silhouetted shape first, and now we're getting the uh, little stems and veins to the leaf. I'm putting some double sides on there. And our sketch that we do for the watercolor next week is not going to be this detailed. We're going to just sketch it real fast and loose. It's going to maybe be just like kind of the bare bones, but we do want this understanding of all of this because of what we're going to be adding with the uh, gel pens. So that white gel pen is going to be really useful once we let this watercolor dry a little bit to go back in and add these little details with the white gel pen over those veins. But we're also going to add some of it with some of these darker uh, browns and, and sepia colors from the, the Viva color sheets there or whatever watercolors that you may have. Although I'll admit it will be much easier with the, the Viva colors since, like I said, we're not going to be mixing anything. We're going to be going straight from the palette with those colors because they just so happen to have some really great fall leaf colors in there without needing to do anything to them. Okay, so notice I've got that little curve on those because I'm seeing that curve. I decided to just move the iPad out of the way because it was really just, I think that's what was messing with my lamplight the most. It's fascinating to me. Uh, I know it's frustrating to y'all, but like optics, right? What the light is doing to the different <laughs> resolution quality of these screens that we're at the mercy of. Pretty fascinating stuff. Okay, so just getting some of those other veins in there because this is the one that I really put a lot of that gel pen in on the I mean, I did it to the other ones as well, but I feel like it really pops there. So we want to make sure we've got a nice study going of what we're going to do with those white gel pens in the next class. And then I'm just adding this tonal shading really, again, just to gain a good understanding of the leaf form. The more we can render it in just sketching form in three dimensions and make it feel nice and rounded. <clears throat> the easier it's going to be to paint it that way. Because next week it is a very fast and loose method that I'm going to be using. And I always like to joke and say, you know, I've had a lot of years of practice with uh, water media, watercolor, ink, uh, gouache, all that fun stuff. And I tend to put it on in a really kind of, effortless looking way. And I always like to joke and say, it's like a hipster who spent hours planning their outfit to make it look like they just threw it on in five minutes. You know, I've spent years practicing um, that technique to be able to do it really fast and loose. 
and make it look effortless, but there's definitely, it's not effortless. A lot of effort went into it and a lot of practice went into it. So does this one little hour study of this leaf, you know, take the place of years of practice? Probably not, but it's a good start. And this is definitely where the, you know, um, the trick is there is no quick fix. There is no, there's just no quick fix when it comes to learning how to draw. I know a lot of these classes are kind of packaged and, you know, offered with catchy titles and a lot of classes that you see online, they may grab your attention, kind of like, you know, clickbait articles, <laughs> like get you in there, get you to click on it. And then once you get there, it's like the truth is revealed that you still have to practice a skill in order to master it. You know, um, unfortunately, there just isn't a quick fix to years of practice. But the good news is, it's pretty, it's just consistency with stuff like this. It's not as daunting as it seems. Just doing any kind of practice every day gets you closer and closer to being able to, you know, mindlessly render things in a, in an effortless way. Okay. So I think that's pretty good for our next leaf. And again, I'm kind of putting that variation in my line weight in there and like pressing down a little harder. And I'm doing that because I really want us to like get a sense of like implied line here. That's another class that's coming up in December, um, implied line exercises that will lead into that, that line weight class. And all of that is very helpful to, you know, this kind of overall drawing practice. In fact, those three classes that I have planned for December, I feel like are the types of exercises that if you practiced those sorts of things every day, uh, you could easily improve your drawing skills over time with consistency, with consistent practice. Okay, so there's leaf number two. Let's see, we want two more big leaves and then we'll put these smaller leaves in here. But this one that's kind of drifting down here, I put a shadow on it in the graphite sketch, but then I left the shadow off in this one because I wanted this one to feel like the only one that was resting on the ground. Um, so let's see which one of these reference photos did I use for that one. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter. You can you can mix them up if you'd like. I just wanted to give you leaves going in different directions. Okay, so we're going to use this one where it's like turned on its side here. But we're going to, I'm going to leave the shadow off this time. And again, we want it a little bigger. This would be really cool on some bigger paper. I know I did it on just these two nine by 12. Uh, sketchbook pages and watercolor paper, but I think this would be really nice on some much bigger paper. That way you really could explore like some distance in between these leaves. Okay, so starting with the stem. And then we're just getting, it's kind of hard to make it bigger because I'm running out of space on the page here. So we're kind of looking for this kind of ladle shape, like a spoon sticking up and then a big, like the handle of a spoon and then a really big spoon or ladle. And then we want to get this, there's some foreshortening happening here. So foreshortening is where information is missing and we know the information is there. And so our brain really wants us to draw the missing information, but we want to stick to just what we can see. So even though we know there's like this inner part of the leaf and we just drew it from a couple of different angles, well, we drew the backside of it, but, um, you know, there's like this little curl happening and we can see these little lips and these curls of overlapping parts of the leaf. So we've really got some depth happening here. And the way that we're going to achieve that is 
just by only drawing the part of the leaf that we can see. So we're looking at this overlapping shape that's happening right here. And I'm drawing this a little darker than I would have you draw it. So try to keep your lines nice and light until you're, you know, comfortable with the shape that you drew. And with the organic things, I always like to say, it doesn't have to look like that exact leaf. We just want it to look like a leaf. And we also would probably like to have a leaf shape that feels, you know, similar to this one. So if you've got some overlapping and you've got some, you know, pointy shapes, but they're not exactly like the one in the photograph, I don't think that's good enough. Like I just kind of made it a little smaller over here and these overlapping shapes didn't quite work out exactly. But that is okay. So we just want some overlapping and then we're really gonna drive home this idea of the overlapping here through the value and the line weight that we're gonna add again. So just Using that tonal shading, we're getting it nice and dark here. And we use our darker brown next week to get these values to come across through color, the color choice. So I'm just following the contours. I didn't put the veins in there yet. Let me go ahead and put those in. This one's going to be a little looser and sketchier in the in the watercolor, so we can keep this one a little less detailed, but I do want to pay attention to some of those veins there, and we definitely want to pay attention to this little overlap, these overlapping moments in this kind of distance and space between the part of the leaf that's closer to us in the front and the leaf that is farther, or the part of the leaf that is farther away. So I just lost my reference image there. Okay, so and we can kind of put this little shadow back here and then let the light hit this. So maybe if you drew these lines kind of dark, erase them a little bit and let them be a little lighter that way by having this line darker it creates this depth and separation here so we're just varying that value and paying attention to these contours and adding the value in a way that follows the contours. Get my iPad out of here again. It's starting to mess with my light again. I only recently, in recent history of these classes, been doing these classes since July 2021, and I used to always use printouts and I still had issues with my graphite not showing up on the, the screen, but since I've started using the iPad, it's interesting how it does that with certain colors of paint or certain, and definitely the graphite is just not dark enough to, to handle, handle that. I'm gonna move on from that light issue with the iPad. Someday, I promise. As soon as this stops being an issue, maybe. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Like I said, we don't need too much on this one. We just want that understanding of the depth. We're just studying it. And I think that's pretty good for what we plan to do next week with that one. Okay, and then this one is the one that's a little more complicated because well, we're introducing the shadow now and this is where we're, we've got even more foreshortening. So let me pull up that reference image. 
So we're looking at this. It's this one, right? Yep. Okay, so again, it doesn't have to look exactly like that leaf. We just want it to look like a leaf. Um, uh, I just saw a comment that said I'm going a little fast. Uh, you know, I want to make sure we get to all of the aspects of the, the class and have some time to share at the end. And um, there is going to be a recording posted of the class later on YouTube. So you can always go back and uh, watch it again and slow it down, you know, pause it to be able to, to go at your own pace. Um, so just wanted to mention that. And also, um, that's a nice reminder of something that I mentioned last week that I'm really excited about that's going to start in December. Um, so in December, we are going to start having, instead of four of these classes per month on Wednesdays, uh, there's going to be three of them per month. And instead of four one hour classes, there's going to be uh, three one and a half hour classes. So we will be able to spend a little bit more time because I know there we're definitely crunched for, for time sometimes in these one hour classes to be able to cover all of the concepts. So that's exciting that that will be happening. Um, but I will slow down a little bit now that we're on the, the last big leaf here. I just was worried when we were still on that, uh, although I say that and it's a quarter till and these last 15 minutes always fly by. So let me get to it. Okay. So we're looking at this one and we, again, we've got foreshortening, but you know, this is the same leaf. We're drawing the same leaf in all these different ways. You have these reference images. And like I said, you can't expect to master a skill like this in one hour. I'm giving you the tools to be able to do your own practice and with consistency in practice, um, you can always, you know, get farther along in, in achieving your goals. So, you know, if you feel like you're falling behind, you know, maybe we can all just take like a deep breath. If it feels like I went kind of fast, let's all take a deep breath together. Let's inhale through our nose. Exhale through our nose. That's always a good practice. You know, I saw those all caps <laughs> going too fast. And that makes me think, you know, maybe we need a deep breath. Um, and we'll slow down just a minute here. And let's just look at the leaf. Sometimes tracing it with your pencil can really help, you know, kind of that muscle memory of, of what we're going for. But we're just drawing the same leaf from multiple angles. You have these reference photos that you can spend, uh, take your time with. We're doing the same um, thing with each reference photo. We're starting with the outer silhouetted shape, uh, and then we're building on um, that shape to add more details. And if you want to go even more general to specific, let's let's start even more general to specific with this one. Okay, so rather than starting with like a more silhouetted outline, I'm gonna start with just a very vague shape of what I'm seeing here. So this is like a very, hang on, it got away from me because I started putting the shadow in there. Like without looking at the shadow, this is the kind of vague, I'm seeing like a bit of a hexagon everybody seeing that it's kind of a hexagon shape okay and then we got our little stem coming off of there okay so we got a hexagon and then now let's build on that hexagon so you hopefully drew that nice and light and then we'll get some of these like triangular shapes this is like the little part that's sticking up right here like a little hammerhead shark I'm just using the side of my pencil and just going around. It does not have to look like this leaf. It just needs to look like a leaf. It actually doesn't even need to look like anything. We're just having fun drawing some leaves. Okay. 
And then over here, kind of dips down, does a little wavy thing. That's pretty good. And then now we can erase that little hexagon shape in there. And if your lines went a little wonky in some different directions, I'm willing to bet there's a leaf out there that looks like that. When I used to paint nebulas all the time, I was really stuck on Hubble space images. At one point, I put the reference images away and I just started painting galaxies and nebulas and stars and clouds in skies based on my memory of all those things. And I always like to say, who's to say that there isn't a nebula out there in the universe that looks like that one that I painted. So, you know, if you've got something that looks like a leaf, but it doesn't look like this uh, exact leaf, who's to say there isn't a leaf out there that looks like the one that you drew? There probably is. Okay, so we've got this little lip that's folding over here. We've got this little guy that's coming in front here. So the way that we're going to make this feel like it is overlapping the rest of the leaf is, you guessed it, the value. So we're going to add some more value on that little part that's sticking up. We're following the contours. And then we're kind of increasing our pressure on our pencil in some places where we want the value to stick out, curving those lines around right here. And yeah, looking at my other, my watercolor painting here off to the side and my other sketch, I can see that I, I drew and painted this leaf a little bit different each time. All right, and then on the inside of the leaf, we're really looking for this kind of like cereal bowl curve, like this radiating out from the center stem. So really want that curve to like, this is where it's gonna, you know, give the impression that it we're looking at the inside of it and that it's kind of like a little cup shape that's happening there. So we're just gonna slow down and really look at how those veins appear in the reference photo. And again, the way that we add the value inside of there, following those curves is what's going to make it feel nice and three-dimensional and feel like a leaf, like the under belly of the inside of a leaf that's being viewed from this angle. All right, and then let's get this shadow that's falling across the, the ground here. So it really feels kind of like the old Batman signals sticking out, like some flames. All those little points are creating those shapes falling across. And then we'll just take the side of that dark pencil, your darkest pencil that you have in the set. I've still got my 6B in my hand and just using the side of the pencil we're going to go inside of our little hammerhead shark shape here because that is all pretty dark and just get it nice and dark i know i'm going quickly with this but you take your time you do not need to finish nobody's grading you nobody's expecting any finished product from you. It's just a little study that we're doing here for our painting next week. So take your time and go at your own pace if you need to finish this later. Whatever you got to do. Okay, so now let's get to, oh, we still got five minutes to do these blurry ones in the background. Okay. So now I want us to do these kind of blurry shapes. And this is where if you've been struggling with just like the general shape of the leaves, doing a bunch of little blurry ones like this might really help. So this is where we're really just looking for that big shape like we just did. 
you know, that kind of hexagonal shape or that triangle shape with a little stem coming off of it. That's all we're really looking for with these is just the, the vague shape of the leaf. And if it helps to look at these, these leaves in motion, these blurry leaves in motion, that really helps. So that's where I was getting these kind of unusual organic shapes from as I was literally just looking at the references that I provided for you where we've got a leaf falling and blurry in the background here. So we go up here to the top and just look at some of these blurry leaf shapes. And yeah, having them of a variety of sizes, it's really good so that you know, we can get this sense of movement to happen here. And if you want to take a page out of my book of not even looking at the reference photo and just kind of sketching a blurry leaf shape from your memory of the, the blurry leaf shape, that's one way to go. And then I'm just shading it in with the side of my pencil and just giving it a little value, like some very continuous tonal value so that it feels nice and blurry and vague in the background. And again, this is just a study so that we can have a good understanding of how to loosely sketch this for our watercolor next week. So all we're going to be doing is putting some of these in the background. And I ended up honestly kind of blurring a bunch of them out with the paint and I lost a few of them. So um, they didn't really, they didn't make it that far in that watercolor. And that is okay if that happens, if they kind of disappear into your background and you're like, well, whatever, I kind of like the way it looks without them, or it's just like the vague idea of them. Or if you really like them and want to put more of them in there, you do whatever feels right to you. I would love it if every project that we do in these classes inspired you to create your own work that was very much your own. And I just saw my inspiration there rather than, you know, something that's exactly like our but, you know, if we end up doing something that's exactly like the one we do together, that's fine too. But that's always like the next level. And my hope is that you're making it your own in some way. And maybe I can't even think of what that way would be because I'm not you. So like I said, I had originally had this planned to be a little different. And then I my daughter commented and said that they don't look like they're falling. So I went back to the, the drawing board and came up with a new plan. And then I thought this plan made it feel more like the leaves were falling. So maybe you've got some other ideas about how to improve on this, this design here, this composition that'll make it feel more you in some way. Okay, um, that is it. And for the, the leaf studies, I'm gonna switch back to my forward facing camera and I'd love to see some of your sketches where you, you landed in this practice. And if you wanna just hold them up, uh, Chanel can spotlight you. Let me turn my light back on. I'm like, why is it so dark? Oh, right, because I turned my light off. Um, Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. Oh, I love that big paper. Yes. I know. I really wanted this to be bigger. That's great. I'm excited about that. Great nails too. <laughs> love it. Carla, oh, look at how you've got your own style coming into that one leaf, especially on the bottom. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, and that one's really strong too. I love how soft your value is on that one. Loving it. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, those are really, oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. That, all of them, especially that one on the bottom, that little uh, 
all those points of value coming up. Really impressive work there. Your value is so soft. The blending is so lovely. Yes, I'm loving the foreshortening. Look at that one, that little cup, that little curve over of that one part of the leaf where it's curving over like that. Really convincing. Oh, and I love how big it got at the bottom. Yeah, having some of them go off the page is another way, I think, to really add some more interest to this composition. Hold it up a little higher and a little closer to the screen. Yes, I love that variation and the value you have there too. Oh, I love how y'all's different styles are coming across in these. Man, we have some talented folks in the class tonight. I'm really impressed. Very nice. Yes. Yeah, having that, if the shadow kind of gets a little scrunched over there on the side of the page, I say just have it go right off the page rather than trying to squeeze it in there. That'll really add some interest to have it going off the page. Ooh, look at those. That looks like some charcoal pencil maybe, maybe, or just a really darker pencil. That's really nice too. And again, your style that's coming across is so different. I love it. I don't think I needed to get on my soapbox about having individualized versions of these because y'all are doing it. Yes, look at that one. Oh my gosh, it really just feels like those ones on the bottom are, are sitting there on the ground and that the other two are, are falling. You really captured, I'm feeling like an emotion with that leaf. Do y'all get a sense of emotion with that one on the ground? Oh, I got more nice manicures here. Y'all are making me self-conscious in my manicure. Look at that, beautiful. I love how they're overlapping. That's another way y'all are giving me more ideas having more leaves, just more leaves and more overlapping, that would really give a sense of movement and just like piling them on if you have the time to do that. The way you overlapped the one that's on its side over the one that's falling behind it, that's brilliant. I don't know if you did that on purpose, but I love it. Now that makes me want to change mine and have them overlapping more. Maybe we'll do that next week. I think you inspired me that Christine I love it. That's another good one. That is wonderful. Yeah, that one on the bottom. I really get a sense of that that curve of the the foreshortening of the leaf that's overlapping itself. And that one at the top is really all of them. It's just gorgeous work. Y'all did amazing. I'm so impressed. And there's another good example. Oh my goodness. These are so great. Oh, your soft line quality on all of those is really lovely. Yeah. I'm excited for all of you to attend that line weight class now so we can see all the different line weights. Very nice, Sarah. Yeah, that's really great. Oh, your value is so soft and, and lovely. And I really get a sense of the, the depth there. Oh, yes. So nice. So many good examples. Yeah, same same thing. I'm getting all of these just had I th I'm starting to think I'm a really good teacher because or y'all are just some brilliant students. These are all so impressive. That one on the top just has so much curve and movement to it. And then here's another beautiful one. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, the the depth on that one that's got the shadow and that one at the top. I'm like pointing with my cursor as if y'all can see where my cursor is pointing. Such lovely soft lines. Thank you, Emma. I love these comments. Thank you, Christine. Sandra, lovely work. Yes, really getting a sense of depth on all of those and the movement of that one. Having that blurry one in the background really gives that sense of movement. Oh, and yeah, there's Haley. I, Haley, I saw you say hi earlier and then I got distracted by my other comments and didn't get to say anything back. Um, this was so great. 
there's another gorgeous example. Y'all have done such beautiful work tonight. I love the blurry ones in the background. They're really feeling far away. All right. Are we at the hour yet? I'm afraid we've gone over. Okay, we're a minute over. Thank you all so much. This was so fun. I'm excited to do it in watercolor next week. And yeah, see you next time. Have a great week, everyone.